Welcome to Truth and Nothing But, Episode 2, Homosexuality. This episode was taken from The Rock Newman Show with Dr. Umar Johnson. The link and full video is in the description. Like and subscribe there. Peace. It, it, that's a, that, that was an impressive answer. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, where you have, I mentioned earlier in the program that you've inspired people and you've upset folks. And some of where, uh, some of the words uh, that you've used and the philosophy that you have put forth that have so upset folks was talking about the, um, uh, how, how the proliferation of black effeminate boys. Yes. And the root causes of that. Yes. Could you please sure. tackle that for me? And I'm glad you brought that up because my position on black male effeminization has often been distorted as well as exaggerated by a lot of media outlets. Number one, let's deal with the facts. Fact number one, up until 1974, homosexuality was a mental illness in American society. If you get a copy of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, that's the yeah. Bible of all diagnoses, mm -hmm. it's in there. Yeah. Same-sex attraction is a mental illness. I have a copy of it. It was changed in 1974 at an annual conference of the American Psychiatric Association. And in the position paper, which I have, it clearly says that the removal of homosexuality from the diagnostic manual was not done because we have sufficient evidence to prove that this is a biologically innate personality trait. It says it. We didn't do this because we had proof that people are born this way. It was done for political reasons. In my own personal opinion, what I've studied, homosexuality was deregulated so that the LBGT movement could trump the black civil rights movement as the primary non-white issue in America. And it's already happening. You look at President Obama's behavior, he's made history. He signed more laws for the LBGT community. He hasn't signed a single law for black people since he's been in office. The only issue that matters in America now, the only minority issue, is the LBGT agenda. You hear almost nothing about black folk. That was the reason it was deregulated. However, although I don't support homosexuality. I cannot hate or deride the homosexual or the lesbian because being a therapist, I do work with homosexual and lesbians, adults as well as youth. And in my experience, my direct clinical experience, most of the African American and Latino males that I have worked with, young and old, were all victims. Nine out of every 10, there were a few exceptions, were victims of pedophilia in their early years normally before 12. And you suggest then that that pedophilia contributed to their lifestyle behavior. Well, not even what I suggest. What they say in therapy is I am this way because my first sexual act was with a male. And for whatever reason, Dr. Johnson, it's done something to me that makes me feel that this is the way I'm supposed to be coming from the client. And of course, there's always different perspectives on the etiology of homosexuality. But why do you never hear that voice? Why do you never hear discussion on the role of early sexual molestation as a trigger for homosexuality? Am I saying every single person who's gay was a victim of childhood molestation? No, I'm not. But why has there been no discussion on the many who have? In my experience, and I've met probably close to 100 gay or lesbian, African-American, Latino, brothers and sisters. And guess what? Most of them had that as the etiology. I work with lesbian girls in the high schools. They'll tell me in a minute, you know why I'm this way? I wasn't born this way, Dr. Johnson. I'm this way because I was sexually molested. I grew up in a house where I saw my mother get beat on by my father. So I have a distrust and almost a hatred towards black men. I'm consciously living with another woman because I'm afraid to live with a black man. I've had these things told to me. And why is this not on the public discussion? It's because they want to push, in my opinion, homosexuality, not for uh, uh, marital reasons or sexual freedom reasons, but as a population control strategy because two black men can't make a child, two black women can't make a child. In fact, if you look at many of the funders of the LBGT movement, they're not LBGT. They are heterosexuals who are proliferating the behavior because they know for every gay black man, 
That's a man who will not be bringing children into this world. Those are women who will not be bringing children into this world. But do I hate my brothers and sisters because they have this situation? No, I don't. Is it a mischaracterization of your position mm -hmm. that, you're, that no one is born homosexual? No, that is my position. African people, I can't speak for other cultures, but for African people, I haven't come across any evidence whatsoever in my own direct experience with LBGT members as well as in literature that I would consider credible. And I say credible because much of the literature that pushes LBGT as a normal way of life is funded by LBGT interest groups. So how can you trust the research when the research is being funded by people who belong to that particular population? It's just like with drug research. The drug companies fund the research to determine if their drug is safe. How can you trust that research? But in research that I've seen that's credible and neutral, there's no evidence to suggest African-American folk are born that way. And I've had respectable conversations with members of the LBGT community. Okay, I've been on radio shows. I've been challenged by gay, lesbian, of men and women who said, listen, we want to challenge you on this issue. Are you willing to come on a radio show? Sure, because it's not a disrespect thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a disrespect thing. There's still people. And do you know that African-American gay men have one of the highest suicide rates in the country? Do you really think I'm going to disrespect, impugn, and deride my brother who's a homosexual when I know that he's more likely to take his life than almost any other black man in the community? So the, 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 the propaganda, is that because Dr. Johnson doesn't support homosexuality and lesbianism, it automatically follows that he hates the homosexual and the lesbian. That's not my position. I love all African people, yeah. regardless of whatever their persuasion is, but I reserve the right not to advocate behaviors that I feel are not in the best interest of my people, but I do not hate them.